We put this feature in last year. We have the sunken kind of patio fire pit area over here. They put a bunch of chairs. There's gonna be a fire pit. There's gonna be a big long stream that comes down and enters in over here. So we've got this stone pathway that comes up over here. That's gonna lead to a pathway that cuts around this Alberta spruce. So there's a pathway that's gonna go here to a future pavilion gazebo type thing over in there. We've got a little tributary waterfall that's gonna come in over here. So another waterfall is gonna be here. And this area, we'll get another one at the blade of the machine and then right where the machine's sitting is going to be an additional bog filter. This thing is enormous. Brian, how heavy do you think that is? 50, 56 pounds. 56? 56? <laughs> That's got to be the biggest one on the project. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay, so as you guys know, the first start of any project is loading up all the materials. So today, we've got the guys all here at Aqualand bright and early this morning. You can see we've got the gang buzzing around, bebopping around. We've got the pallet of product that has our small aqua blocks, our fabric, our three inch pipe. We've got Juan over here on a forklift. Then we've got Micho over there. These guys are what keeps the heartbeat going in a construction department. So without them, we couldn't do anything. So super pumped to have them as a part of this project. Nick and I have been flying solo for about the last couple weeks working on stuff. So it's nice to have these guys back from clean outs. Can't wait to get this project started. Let's go. So the guys just showed up. This is the project that we worked on last year and it just looks absolutely incredible. The water is gin clear and we are going to be adding a stream and waterfalls area with a big wetland filter with an urn up at the top. You excited? Yeah. Glad to be back? Yep. Good, so we're gonna get our equipment unloaded, get our product unloaded, move this stuff out of here so that we can have access. The homeowner has done an incredible job of already getting all of the stone ready. I would say we have more than enough here, but it's better to have a great selection. You can see he's got bodies of water all surrounding him. So there's a wetland, marshy area over here, back over there, and all around. The customers actually live with water surrounding them on 360 degrees, and we're just putting, I guess, the finishing touches on it over here. So really excited to be back. I know they're excited too. Can't wait to get this project rolling. So after we get things unloaded, we are going to start draining the pond a little bit to give ourselves some breathing room when pulling the rock and liner back. But we're gonna start excavation and start getting this thing knocked out. So enjoy the ride. We got our equipment mobilized. We got young Nick here. Where are you going? Where are you going? Get some stuff wrapped up before the lightning zaps us. Yeah. Somebody brought the bad weather. Yeah, well. You in a bad mood today? No, I'm actually in a good mood. We'll see, that's why the bad weather is here. Nick angry. So, I don't know, the radar does not look too promising, but we are going to go ahead and just start plucking these rocks out in through here, getting that mulch out of the way, and we'll get as far as we can, and hope that the weather holds off. All right, let's do it. First little pooling area. This is where we are going to bring the waterfall from the the new stream and waterfalls in is going to come in right where Micho is standing, split between all these rocks in through here. So we've got this part dug out. Then we have our next part of the stream pooling area dug out. We've also gotten in a, a an additional stone step right back behind Juan over there. So from the top of that step to the elevation of that sidewalk is still 15 inches. So the challenge for us is going to be how are we going to make this look look good and compensate for that gradient change coming from the what will be a future patio down 
down to this step in through here. So our challenge is, is do we put another step here on this side and another one to step down to a bridge that goes across? Or do we put two steps there and then the bridge goes straight across to the patio? Or do we put two steps down there to a sunken patio, bridge straight across to that elevation? So these are all challenges that we face on the job site every day. And we have to creatively find an artistic yet functional solution to this. So what I think we're gonna do is I think we're gonna split the difference and put one step on one side of the pond, one on the top side. But once we get this bottom waterfall pooling area out, that will help us figure out elevations on the outside of the rock and the stream to see what we can get away with. So we decided to refocus our efforts and build that bottom waterfall slash pooling area. So that's where we're gonna focus our energy right now. And then we will cross that proverbial bridge and literal bridge when we get to it. It's the end of day one. We got, actually, we got a really lot done today. Let me show you where we're at and what we got to do tomorrow. So you can see we got this first part of the stream down here. That's awesome, looking great. So great progress today. Quite a few big rocks in it. Matches super, super well. The style matches super, super well with everything that's already in this existing pond. The pond's clearing up. We messed it up a little bit today, adjusting some things from last year, but that's okay. It'll be clear in no time at all. This is one of our favorite places to work. They feed us, they take great care of us. So that's it for today. We'll catch you guys in the morning. This is day two, and I just want to see kind of where the progress is and how this is all going to come together. It looks like a mess right now, but to me, I see a lot of beauty. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you guys can remember this. It's a little shady, but this time last year, this was all grass. Here it is. It's going to be a front yard pond. This is actually their driveway. Super intimate, very private. Now we're going to finish off the front of this house. And so we put this feature in last year. We have the sunken kind of patio fire pit area over here. They put a bunch of chairs, gonna be a fire pit. Looks like they've added another step up over here and they knew they were gonna add another stream. So we actually went ahead and already plumbed up a three inch pipe right here that runs out to the pump vault that sits over in this area. And so there's gonna be a big long stream that comes down and enters in over here. So they've already gone ahead and finished the waterfall coming in over here, which is really cool. And what I like about this design so much is it has way more of this like crevasse type look. So rather than being really shallow streams, it's still a shallow stream with really high edges on it, which just looks amazing. So we've got this stone pathway that comes up over here. That's gonna lead to a pathway that cuts around this Alberta spruce. I might even move this Alberta spruce to just give me some more room for the pathway. So there's a pathway that's gonna go here to a future pavilion gazebo type thing over in there. We've got a little tributary waterfall that's gonna come in over here. And you can see they've already gotten a bunch of these boulders setting over here. So another waterfall is gonna be here. And this area, we'll get another one at the blade of the machine. And then right where the machine's sitting is gonna be an additional bog filter. So this pond will be spotless with two really large wetland filters on it. So I'm here till about 11.30 today, help any way I can. And we should have this thing wrapped up by the end of the day tomorrow. Bye. Okay, so one thing above all else that gives me the big feels around here is seeing these two guys. First of all, what they love, but what they do best, and that is building kick-ass waterfalls. What these guys are doing is actually gonna create a very unique, one-of-a-kind element in an area that otherwise didn't already have something going on. So they're gonna build almost this artesian spring-fed waterfalls, doing a series of small, quick cascades, kind of those little pitcher-style falls, lots of change in direction, but adding another waterfall to what is already a 
pretty over the top water feature, wouldn't you say, guys? Yeah, over the top. <laughs> I know these guys are gonna do it. Awesome. I just wanted to show you that it's not all just Brian, Nick, and myself. These guys are master waterfall builders themselves, and they are working on this area, which is perfect. They're a perfect setting for an additional waterfall. So you guys are gonna kill it, I know. I can't wait to see how it turns out. You guys are awesome. about to set what I believe is probably the biggest rock on the project. I don't know if you can see it behind me, but this thing is enormous. Brian, how heavy do you think that is? 50, 56 pounds. 56? <laughs> 56. You know what, that black granite is considerably denser than the other stuff. I'm guessing that's a 3,000 pound rock. That's gotta be the biggest one on the project. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy. But we need this big rock. And why? You know, we've got this big urn here, and I love using the big urns whenever possible, or the big spears and that kind of stuff. But that big urn would look totally out of place if we didn't have big rocks to scale it down. Not only are we gonna need some big rocks like around it, but they need height back behind it with trees and landscape and everything else. It also add some depth to the whole project so like we're getting pretty big with this thing you know from where we started last year to where we're kind of finishing up today it adds scale and dimension to the whole thing and so I think this big rock is important if we didn't have it we came in with a bunch of 24 or 30 inch boulders back behind this that thing would look like a big pencil sticking up in yeah. there now it has purpose and that's one of the things that we've learned obviously over years of doing this in repetition is that with an element like this as large as it is is going to need something of equal size maybe even bigger just to help give it that scale that Brian was just talking about so we're gonna place this big rock somewhere back in here behind it to help draw your eye away from how enormous this urn is while still giving it that high impact that we're looking for so there's the urn it's about five feet tall and we've got that massive rock right there so as big as that rock looked it's still a good two feet Brian it's really hard to see with yeah 